It's Thursday, February 3rd, 2022 AD, Anno Domini. I used to call it Domini, which that's what the British pronounce it. And, uh, you know, we're leftover British. We're the better half of the Brits, right? Here in America. We're American. Um, and it's 9.01 a.m. here in Los Angeles. And we're going to have a fun show. Should it be a loosey-goosey show or should it be a nice Thursday cut and dry show? It is Thursday. We're, I was on the after party with No White Guilt last night. And that's on uh, thehakereport.com. I'll tell you a little bit about it. It was fun. I want to talk about this black guy, po- phony politician, Canadian guy, who's smearing the truckers, the freedom convoy. And that freedom convoy is ridiculous. Ridiculous. It's shameful. It was declared a, a an unlawful assembly, I think I heard. So terrible. What a mess. Um, there is an attack on free and true speech, and it's here in America as well as in Canada, an attack on the whites. Confederate monuments, American monuments, torn down dozens, many dozens, several dozen, torn down. In 2021, is according to Commie Nonsense Network. I will also get to your calls. Spotify is, Spotify is a Swedish company. All these white companies, countries, companies, just turning on their people, the people, the real American heroes. <laughs> and these people, meanwhile, the poly- phony politicians, they don't care about the, ru- the little dumb rules that they make up. They don't even believe in them. They don't follow them except for the females, and they're misguided anyway, right? They're scared. Women have fear, as JLP has said. And anyway, so I'll talk about all that stuff and more. By the way, Nick Cannon tried to go celibate for like two months. (laughs) Oh, gosh. But anyway, guys, let's get right on with the show! guys doing? I am fine. I will be getting to your calls. 888 I'm pointing way over. 888-775-3773. I like to point to it. It is this phone number here. 1-888-775-3773. While I'm in JLP's studio, I am on his network. It is the same phone number to call his show as mine. And you can do it internationally, even via Skype, without having to pay to ordinarily you have to pay to call a phone number or a landline but not when it's an 888 number such as 888-775-3773 or an 800 number because those are toll free so Skype doesn't charge you just a little tip there guys so you can call from people call from Sweden, Bulgaria and UK voice crackle hey <laughs> yeah some people like the hey guys is the hey guys sounding a little manlier <laughs> asks C. Sal. Way to lower the hey guys by a few octaves there. <laughs> Christian's laughing at me. Christian Aguilar. So, um, let me just tell you briefly. Yesterday, I did appear. Oops. Yesterday, I did appear on the, uh, the afterparty.tv. The afterparty.tv. With, uh, no white guilt. That's Jason. And I... Neglected to ask him how to pronounce his name, perhaps. Perhaps him, when I have him on my show, I will ask him how to pronounce his name. K-O with the two dots over it. H-N-E. And Jared George of The Great Order. And uh, people are like, oh, it's cool hearing your story. Fabriette says, 
Uh, great job on, great interview last night. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you guys. That was cool. My next appearance is looking like it's going to be Saturday, February 12th on Modern Day Debate. Uh, talking about the imaginary systemic, systematic racism. Versus, supposedly versus, Hunter Avalone. And, uh, I saw a, uh, heads up, a tip from, uh, Asmodor over in my Odyssey, in my Odyssey, my Telegram channel, t.me, t-m-e, slash the Hake Report, that... This guy is trying to throw his weight around and throw me off, and he's scared. And it might be is like trying to just keep on delaying, but who knows? He's like a young, maybe somewhat immature. You got to be pretty immature to to go from so-called conservative to liberal. You know what I mean? Which is what I hear that he did. But I will be debating him according to the schedule. On Modern Day Debate YouTube channel, not this Saturday, but the following, February 12th. And then the 13th, I'm supposed to do a pre-recorded with Mad Chats, Mad Andrews. Cool. So, I'll keep you guys up to, be, up to date. Just check out the HakeReport.com at periodically, appearances section. You can catch the, uh, the after-party interview from last night on YouTube, No White Guilds YouTube, Odyssey, No White Guilds Odyssey, Twitter... Jason, No White Guilds, Twitter. It's also on Spreaker as an audio podcast. So it's all, all the info's there. So, um, before I get to calls, I have to show you this ridiculous, silly, melodramatic, phony politician talk that somebody tagged me on Twitter. Was it Canadian David? Not sure. May, it might have been. This Canadian... I want to say the word so bad, uh, shame, Seamus, S-E-A, S-E-A-M-U-S, is that pronounced Seamus? Kind of like Sean, but Seamus, Sean, I don't know, see, I want to say Seamus, but it's S-E-A-M-U-S, Seamus O'Regan Jr. I don't know if he's an Irishman, or he's more like an Irish male, because he's not a man. He says, and I quote, listen to Greg Fergus. And Greg Fer- Fergus is a phony fellow politician up in Canada, apparently. Let him know he doesn't stand alone. But when you listen to this clip, at the end of the clip, you'll hear all this applause, this standing ovation applause after this melodramatic mess, lies. And uh, he already knows he doesn't stand alone because evil never stands alone. They are a bunch of cowards. It's kind of like the people who gang up against people in order they attack the weak and the and the uh, vulnerable, the solos in packs like animals. You know how that goes. It's Seamus, says uh, Elizabeth A. It is the name James in Gaelic. Psh, keyword not morally straight. <laughs> no, I resp- I like that name. It's kind of a cool name, but this guy is putting a bad name to his name. So listen to this clip 11. Hopefully it plays after all that intro. This is Greg Fergus, who is a black male, apparent phony politician, smearing this, I think that it's smearing this trucker convoy, the freedom convoy, the people who don't like the communist shutdowns and mandates and vaccine mandates and all that stuff over this disease that it I think it does hurt a lot of people but it's the the mandates are hurting even more and in many more ways and it's not necessary it's it's female minded overprotective counterproductive destructive thinking right we all know that so here's listen to listen to Greg Fergus and let him know he doesn't stand alone listen to this Every February, I normally rise to encourage parliamentarians and Canadians to celebrate Black History Month. These are not normal times. This past weekend, a small minority thought it acceptable to bring swastikas and Confederate flags to Parliament Hill. Yes, it is. Let's not mince words. 
the Confederate flag is a symbol for slavery. No. Nope. Whips deformed black bodies. Forced labor mangled limbs. Torture almost always preceded lynchings. Intellectually, I know that very, very few people today would support what the Confederate flag represented. I will assume that the Confederate flag was tolerated this weekend out of respect for the individual's freedom of expression. Not that you don't have. However, in my heart, I was left wondering, who else supports this flag? An evil person. Without real-time denunciations, how am I to know? That's what scares me. Even after 188 years since the abolition of slavery in Canada, you in some people's eyes, I am not equal, nor should no, I be not. free. You don't believe in freedom? This is why I celebrate black history, black Canadian history, <laughs> every February and throughout the year. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Somebody's hugging him. Standing ovation from the weak Canadian cowards. Look at that green carpet. What a disgrace, huh? So this Seamus O'Regan Jr. who tweeted this uh, tweet. Oh, actually, I have the screenshot of the tweet. Greg Fergus, Canada. Seamus tweet. Seamus O'Regan Jr. He followed up in a reply to his own tweet saying, Greg and I, Greg is this black male, and if you were listening to the audio feed, that was a black. He doesn't sound black, but he was a black. Uh, Greg and I met at Forum for YC. It's like young people's conference. There were young, uh, ambitious wannabe politicians for, I guess, for a long time, right? In 1988, 88, 33 years ago, I remember his grace and eloquence then. He was voted prime minister by our class. You know how the phony politician youngins who want to get into like student politics and stuff that's the type of people that these males were and uh typical liberals am i right he was voted prime minister f fake prime minister right straw poll type of thing by our class this is why and he's just f talking a bunch of phony stuff first of all slavery wasn't ab about mangling black bodies and lynching them and torturing them we tortured and i say we they tortured the, uh, people whom they were outraged at who had done a violation, uh, against the community in their, uh, the white community in their eyes. So, give me a break. It takes two to tango, right? It's not like these were all a bunch of innocent blacks that they were so-called, uh, lynching. And then the slavery thing. You're not gonna mangle the body of, uh, your slave. You want your slave to be functional. Give me a break. And you should be grateful rather than bitter. And the Confederate flag was, slavery was on its way out. Even the great Confederate general, Robert E. Lee, American hero. I think he would, had the offer to be on the Union side, but he was loyal to Virginia. Back when loyalty to states meant something. He was a man of honor. And he even called slavery a, a political and moral evil. So even many of the Southerners did not like or want the slavery. They see, saw it as bad, worse for the whites than it was for the blacks. The blacks had a net benefit. And to this day, so this guy is a phony, evil, nasty, filthy, wannabe mind-reading person. Oh, I want the, I want to, to see condemnations in real time. To this day! From the, uh, what did I say to this day? Oh yeah, blacks should be thankful to this day. They should! But this guy's kissed to up. To this day! kissed up to. Instead, they're bitter because they can know that they, or they pretend to be bitter, because they know they can push around the whites. How sick. People got lynched for crimes, says David Dyer. Yeah, alleged crimes anyway. This guy with his full beard, that means he's part white. I hear, right? Don't, don't blacks in Africa, can they grow beards? 
or do they have to have white jeans to grow beards? You didn't seem that dark black. The Dukes of Hazard was a good show, says Rick Liu. Yeah. Totally. So, uh, Confederate flag is a symbol of slavery. Well, you should be grateful for slavery that you got to be here and get all kissed up to, although I'm sure he doesn't really like being kissed up to. Nobody likes that. Or even if they get an ego high from it, they know that that's phony. Everybody knows what a phony world the politics thing is. So that's them. That's them. Smear- and who knows who was carrying the flags anyway? He's condemning the whites the, and the freedom-loving people for their freedom rally for b- supporting freedom of speech of the people flying the Confederate flag. And who knows who was con- flying the Confederate flag? I probably wouldn't bring a Confederate flag to that stuff, even though I love it and I love the beautiful South and the beautiful people there. You know what I mean? So, anyway. No chest hair either, says t- <laughs> Timotheus. Well, anyway. Yeah, and it was the war of northern aggression. You know, uh, let me just read this. Speaking of this attack on the, on the beautiful South, um, before I go back to the Freedom Convoy thing, uh, commie nonsense, let me just read this. Commie Nonsense Network, CNN, enemies of the whites, enemies of America, enemies of men, enemies of Christians, enemies of truth, they say 73, that's how many Confederate monuments were removed or renamed in 2021, according to a report from the evil Southern Poverty Law Center, SPLC, which was up until recently, up until relatively recently, last several years, referenced on the website of the FBI, but then they were removed, but I think they still reference them. And I think they still reference the ADL, also enemies of America, enemies of decency. Southern Poverty Law Center, they're dedicated to the poverty of the South, subverting the law. That's why they're a law center, subverting the law to be against Christians and Southerners and the beautiful whites. The removals and renamings of these beautiful American monuments, Southern American monuments, come at a time when Americans, write CNN, continue to grapple with whether the Confederate monuments belong in public places. Of course they do. It's not up for debate. If you're bitter about it and, and uh, upset about it, that's on you. That's your fault. Or, you're the, or the fault of the people who, uh, who traumatized you to hate whites and to hate the past, which you never even knew. You know what I mean? These people never even knew what the real slaves went through or the real Jim Crow people went through. Some of them are, some of them may remember it and be, and be bitter about it. You know, my favorite caller, Mays from Dayton, I told my kids never to move off the sidewalk because, for whites, because we used to have to move off the sidewalk for whites. Give me a break. Whites will gladly move off the sidewalk for other people. Because they're considerate, too considerate sometimes, right? These statues stand, according to very fake CNN, as symbols of racism, no such thing, in the United States, dating back to the Civil War, and they call it the Civil War. I'm told, and it makes sense, that it's actually the War of Northern Aggression. Because the South wanted to secede. And the North wanted, no, you can't secede, we're going to war to keep you with us. (laughs) Uh, sounds like a bad breakup, right? You have to stay. Or, you have to stay. Because if the North were women. Uh, so, so claim the so-called civil rights activists. No such thing as civil rights. That is symbols of racism. And, uh, and lying communist, anti-American, anti-white, anti-truth historians. Historians. People say, and a lot of you guys say, history was written by the victors. I'm not sure that that's true. Because the victors don't, don't really write. And are there always, are there victors, really? There's always a loser in a war, or losers, there's not always a winner. That's something I learned in high school. From a fellow orange-haired, he was more orange, his hair was more orange. Uh, Mr. Welch was my teacher. And, uh, I took that, that, for some reason that stuck with me, I don't know if it's true or not, but I think it is. It, It rings true, I think. Not always a winner, but there's always at least one loser in any war. 
I think history is not written so much by the victors as the propagandists, the snakes. These people aren't winners. They're losers themselves. You see what's going on with Commie Nonsense Network, CNN? And their narrative is, is and their anti-American narrative is winning out, but they themselves are losers in their personal lives. Their lives are falling apart. So they're not, they're not victors. More than 700 such mo- monuments, Confederate American monuments, remains standing in the USA and our territories. Build more! That's what Trump wanted to do. I don't know if he wanted to do Confederate monuments, but I think that he respected General Lee and others. Or to this day, he probably does. Right? To this day! (laughs) Uh, Gregory Mims says, American flags, and it has a China flag, a rainbow LGBTIQ... Well, perversion of a rainbow, it's the sideways thing. A real rainbow is, has an arc to it, and it's not gay. As in, not morally straight. And then it also has the American flag, the Israel flag, the X, which I'm not sure what that is. Is that German flag? And then eyeballs. Thank you, Gregory Mims. <laughs> okay, uh, does Hake have Down syndrome? Uh, maybe a mild form. I don't think so, though. But it's so evil. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the convoy being declared an unlawful assembly, I think is what I saw. The Canadian military maybe need to clear the freedom convoy protesters, say the Ottawa police. Ottawa is the capital of Canada. But first, guys, let me get to a call or two. Hey! Social pariah out of Denver, Colorado. He can... He's able to call in, at least. He said that he wasn't be able to. But what's up, Social Pariah? Hey, what's going on, Hank? Hey, it's good to hear from you. Yeah, I was uh, just going to weigh in. I was listening to that tech parody again that book, all the book. Are you on a speakerphone or Bluetooth or driving in your vehicle, driving through the Rockies in that cold that, weather? Oh, man, that was brutal. That's a, that no, sounds a little better. Okay. Yeah, I was uh, I was listening to the uh, that book again. I was telling you about, you know, uh, but which which book a, which book again? I'll, I'll let uh, you tech, just mention it. Tech tyranny. Say again. By, uh, uh, tech tyranny. Tech tyranny. Yeah, it was uh, by that uh, well, I forget what his name is. Uh, okay. Congressman. From, uh, oh, the the tyranny of big tech from by Josh Hawley. Yeah, that I got the name wrong. Okay, okay. that that book. All right. Anyway, it went into greater detail. You know, it, it goes through the history of you know uh, what led up to uh, big corporatist America that we live in now. And uh, it was Wilson that really kind of got it started. It was like you know, well, freedom is. not what what the founding fathers thought freedom was when, was that you had the ability to provide work with your hands to provide a living, you know it, that the government was supposed to protect that. But uh, Bush Bush Senior in the New World Order pretty much promoted open borders and unfair wow. trade unfair trade that pretty much kills American small business. Clinton was part of that, too. I have to blame Clinton on that, too. But Bush the daddy, George H.W. Bush, was part of that. I wouldn't... I'm not questioning that. I'm, I, I don't know, but I, I, gent, I tend to believe you. I remember him mentioning the New World Order. And I know that both of those guys were for the NAFTA. Yeah, it was... <clears throat> but, you know, it was, uh, they were... Both, both sides really have not been for the working American yeah. in quite some time. I think Theodore Roosevelt was. I believe that. I've heard that he was a solid guy, the- Theodore yeah, Roosevelt. He, he firmly believed in small business. and the, Well, he was, like, big time into cattle, the cattlemen and uh, promoting business with them. And it was, uh, but it was Wilson... Woodrow Wilson, that first, you know, pretty much came up with uh, tech, I mean, not tech, corporatist, big corporations that, you know, pretty, they 
control America now. That's Woodrow Wilson. I heard from the great Bill Lockwood that, uh, that, uh, he was one of the communist evil people. Oh, he was a total snake. Yeah. As a matter of fact, like, one of the things he said at the end of his life was that his biggest regret was, uh, opening up, uh, national banks to control, you know, to monitor the flow of money in the United States. You know, he pretty much sold his soul, sold the country out for, you know, so the big corporations and pretty much communism in the form of, in the form of corporations to take over. He was president and, 1913 to 1921. Democrat. And not a good kind yeah. of Democrat, I don't think. No, I just remember, like, Democrats, you know, whenever I would talk to Democrats, they would say, well, you know, we're in favor. We're, we're trying to help the working man. That we're, it's, you know, bringing over cheap labor is good for the economy. And I'm like, okay, well, I mean, I don't know a whole lot about economics, but I do know that if with uh, supply and demand, if you have more of something that's cheaper, that's going to bring down the price of everything across the board. <laughs> and I was like, how, how can you say that that's helping blue-collar workers? That's just pull, you know? Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I, I'm so dis- disgusted with the Republican Party and what it's become. I, I don't even know if I want, you know, I would like to just see, like, a third party emerge. You think like it's that bad, party. huh? I mean, it is. It's re- I don't know. Well, I don't know many. I, I could probably count on one hand the number of Republican former or current officials whom I would say I generally trust as honorable men. No, I, I would. I would agree. I yeah. mean, it's a, a they, they call it a swamp for the re- for a reason. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, I was just, uh, I didn't know if you were familiar with how bad that new, the whole New World Order agenda was. I'm not and really, bad, I'm not really familiar with it. Well, I, Reagan never, Reagan never really liked Bush Sr. Even when he was his VP, he had, <laughs> I think they, they pushed him on, pushed him on to him, but he never, you know, because he was a snake. Yeah, I. <laughs> I think I might have heard something like that, like you just keep your enemies close type of a thing. And I'm not sure. And that's kind of a shame, too, because he set up. I was told when I was in second grade by Mrs. C. Anfrini, Bush is like Reagan. Dukakis is like, I don't know, somebody else. Uh, and so I told my mother, vote for Bush when she and my father were going out to vote. And she said, OK. <laughs> So I told my mom to vote for Bush the daddy. I was in second grade. I get. I guess I was in second grade. Yeah, yeah, that was the beginning of second grade, November '88, right? Huh. Yeah. He, Little did I, I know, I mean, he was not it. like Reagan. He was just. Uh, well, he was. He, he was a conservative, a fiscal conservative, but he was not doing any favor for the American workers. Yeah, and I've heard negative things about Reagan too. Who knows? Yeah, I believe, I believe Reagan, I, he was a good leader. I don't think that he really, you know, the, I think they mo- mostly pushed for like big, corp- big corporations and stuff, you know, and, and yeah, but I, I believe, I believe Reagan was far better than, than Bush. Yeah, I, I, I tend to believe, I tend to buy that. I think a lot of the stuff that they do gets used for evil. Just yeah, like, I, just I like mean, what's what Trump, like Trump made the vax, right? And I don't know if anybody should take it. I don't know if anybody should not take it. I, I couldn't tell you because I'm not in, not really, not really that interested. Because you know I'm young and trying to be healthy, so I think that that should hopefully protect me. But uh, what he did is being used for evil, and we knew that that was going to come too. We knew the. I knew that the Vax mandates were coming as soon as I heard about him working on a Vax. I knew it was coming, but uh, I knew that he wouldn't support it. But whatever, it's gonna—it was gonna happen anyway. 
crazy. Well, I mean, our, our politicians use such deceptive practices now. You know, just yeah. like uh, 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 with uh, uh, the book by uh, Mark Levin, where he's American Marxist. Uh-huh. The tactics that they use, you know, it's like they're divisive and deceptive. And I'm like, how can you trust anything anybody says in government when that when they shoot, when they play by that those principles, you know? Right. Yep. And they do not they do not care being caught in a lie and inconsistency. That's the that's the way. That's the commie way. It's the anti white, anti decency way, man. It's like a woman. Oh, they can't is. admit they're wrong. <laughs> and that's why how they think the evil kind of woman. Well, thank you, Social Pariah. It's great to hear from you, man. Yeah, yeah, I would uh, like to call in more, but, you know, i got to take care of work. <laughs> I understand. Anything else. I'm glad you were able to make an exception today. That's cool. All right, man, I will talk to you later. All right, take care. Uh, let me quickly get to Jeremiah in Louisiana. How you doing, Jeremiah? This is the day the Lord has made. <laughs> Still on I that. I shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hey. Hey. What's up? Chilling. How's the, thing, how's the kingdom doing? It's doing fine. The kingdom Heard of the Lord. Russia and Ukraine, though. The kingdom of the Lord is doing fine. Yeah, I heard that. Sorry. I heard that Biden. Come on. Sleazy, king, sleazy king Biden king. administration. Sent 3,000 U.S. troops to uh, Romania, Poland, and Germany. Well, some from Germany who moved to, like, Poland or Romania. Oh, oh yeah. A little, a little warm over there, don't it? Warm? <laughs> I think it's cold, but Ukraine is... It's heating up. It's, heat, it's definitely heating up. Yeah, who knows? Who cares? We'll, we'll but they, we weeks. shouldn't be involved. It's funny because... Ukraine is steadily, I mean, Russia is steadily building up troops on Ukraine's uh, northeastern border, and that's Russia's southwestern border. And so Russia is protecting their border, and who knows what else is going on. Maybe they do want to invade. I have no idea. But they have all this. Meanwhile, the globalists, the libs, the anti-whites have all this fear. And so they're sending the people over there, sending our American troops. It kind of seems inevitable, though, don't it? Like, what seems inevitable? Like war, because Russia is saying don't, don't, don't invest or don't uh, pass our security space, mm-hmm. and NATO is just doing what they want. They do what they do, right? It's funny. I think they both think they both accuse each other of doing what they want to do. It doesn't seem right. inevitable. Exactly. War does not exactly. seem inevitable to me. It, I would be kind of does. I would honestly both, be a like, little surprised if it does happen. If no, war that, actually does happen, that's not, that's not even, we're, we're, we'll see. We'll see where that goes. Yeah, uh, wait and around. see. But we'll, um, it's funny the, how you're the, so the, interested the in these white countries. <laughs> they said the misdirection is actually in Syria, like what Russia's doing in Syria. But that's a whole other. That's a whole other topic. What I want to talk the, about is black on black um, crime, right? Last um, last point about the Ukraine situation. Nick says, and I heard this. I, I worry about the pipeline, the, well, the pipeline that's going through Indian land. I worry about uh, the native people, the uh, Hispanic people. That's what I'm going to get to. Okay, well, hold about on one moment. Yeah, hold, hold on one moment on that, Jeremiah. I just want to mention mm-hmm. this one thing about Ukraine. The Ukrainian president, per Nick the anchor baby, Nico, was saying the U.S. media is causing panic. Situation with Russia and Ukraine is the same as a year ago. Interesting. Very interesting. That's I believe one that. Person. That's one person. Well, one person can be telling the truth because you, hey, you and okay. I both know so, the mainstream media lies and cause okay. hype and overhype. So that one person, that one person, okay, you keep calm because that one person says keep calm while everything is going crazy around you, chaos, chaos all around you. Isn't that good advice to keep country, calm? Even in this country. Is it not good advice to keep calm? Yeah, but usually, usually hey, no, yeah, you but. Might, they run around with, <laughs> with like a chicken with a head cut off when stuff's going on, so it's going to happen. Regardless, either way, it's going to happen. Food shortages, uh, <laughs> civil war, uh, potential civil war, all that's going on right now. China, Iran, uh, North Korea, uh, you know what I'm saying? All this stuff going on, man. Y'all, it just give you a little bit more time. Y'all, y'all start running around in a panic. Well, the anyway. Bible says there will be wars and rumors of wars. Uh, uh, you uh, stay uh, steady. That's beautiful. So that's beautiful. Um, anyway, yeah, it is beautiful. Uh, Rich. 
Rich was absolutely 100% correct what he was saying yesterday. And, and we always say so-called blacks, so-called Hispanics, and so-called Native Americans are the true descendants of, of uh, the Israelites, the biblical Israelites. We always say that. I've always told you that. Yeah. I, don't why you, I don't know why you bear false witness and say we don't say that, but I've always said that. Y'all always put us and lump us together, uh, people of color, persons of color, people of color, that's what you call us, right? The now, POCs. Black on black crime, I don't call you that. I do call you that, but I'm not the one who came up with that. I just, I just imitate the libs. You, you took it and ran with it. All yeah. of y'all came, Peter Mike came up with that. So it don't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter. No, you, you guys came up with it. Came up with it. <laughs> All you guys came up with it. But anyway, Whatever. black on black crime, right? So yeah. you do realize that that's been going on since, since Moses. This is why it's so important to us. If, yeah. you, if you look into Cain and Abel. Samuel, if you look into Samuel, um, Kings Chronicles, where when 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 King Saul first came on the scene, he was from the tribe of Benjamin, I believe, uh-huh. right? I think so. So he was from the tribe of Benjamin, and do you know him and King David, which was the tribe of Judah? They were they were going at each other, right? Yeah. David okay. didn't kill him. He had the chance to. I was thinking right. about that he yesterday. Did. Yeah, he did. Yeah. He really did. But and he, he so didn't do it. Love because that's the law. David nice. was in the law, so yeah. he spared his life. But Saul always pursued him with the sword. Right. right? Jealous. So Saul, Angry and Saul, jealous. Saul had his captain of the host, which was Abner, right? Okay. And David had his king of, uh, king of the host. But he, uh, he had his, his captain of the host, but he wasn't king at the time because Saul was king, right? But he was coming up. So yeah. Joab was his captain, right? Okay. They were all, it, was always, it was always battles between Benjamin and Judah. It's always been battles between us as a people. You know, the, the northern, the northern and the southern kingdom was divided in King Solomon. Northern so, what, kingdom, what do you think that you? Northern, what tribe do you think that you are? Judah. The northern kingdom. Oh. The northern kingdom is the Hispanics and Native Americans, or the all of. The, what are you saying, Puerto Rico? Uh, uh, what a uh, Mexican. Yeah. Uh, Brazil. All of those are northern kingdom. Uh, Gad, which would be Native Americans, they're <laughs> Northern Kingdom. They were in Assyrian captivity, wow, right? Before nice. before we went into captivity. Assyrian captivity was way before any uh Yeah, I believe. Uh you, um they right, went into captivity and dispersed. They were dispersed. That's when they were dispersed. So when all they right. were dispersed, all they they were scattered abroad. That was the Northern Kingdom. Now the binding of the stick would be both the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom coming back together to realize who they who they really are, and that's going to happen. That's future prophecy. But right <laughs> now nice. we're divided. That's what I say. Like I'm not talking about uh, y'all spend trillions of dollars to keep America divided, which it still is. It's, it's black people, uh, white people, French people. Everybody's divided. But for the for, for the the important part is we can't let black and brown people unite because if they unite and realize who they are. Everything's going to be, everything is, it's, it's going to turn. Black and brown, gonna, but blacks don't even unite w- with one another because they hate each other. Like you said, black on black crime, and it's been going on forever. We, I don't we, think we, that, we, I don't we, think that Saul we, was black, and I don't think that David was black, but point taken, question, human wait. beings hate and kill one another. Of course you would. But it's, it's right. a self-hate thing, Hank. It's not that we hate each other, it, we hate ourselves. So you hate yourself? It, it, I don't, because I know who I am. Did you used to? America, when I, when I, when I, before I repented and, and, and turned into the laws, I was African American. I was lost, just like all the, all the African Americans that I talked to. What did you we repent know, from? Repent from, you, that's, that's, a, that's a good question, Hank. Yeah. So, what do you need repentance for if sin is done, if, if, there, if the law is done away with? What is sin, what is sin? Sin is, you're not doing what God told you to do, right? I I, what is I guess so. I don't really know. Well, what is it to you then? Um, you don't know. Separation so from don't God. Know what sin is, or, yeah, I don't. That? I don't exactly know. It's separation from God. It leads you to that into that lawlessness. They say sin is sin leads to all the lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness, says the Bible. So mm-hmm. something like that. It's like the root that drives you oh. to evil. Okay, which would be come from from Satan, right? Satan would yeah. tell you, oh, you. To follow the laws of God, right? The, God, the, the, the laws of God are there for a reason. 
So you have that morale. So you have principles to stand on. So you can be a leader. All right. If you don't do that law, then you're in sin. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, Jeremiah, you know what? You rem- I thought of you recently when I was thinking about my interview, which I appeared on the theafterparty.tv with Jason from No White Guilt and mm-hmm. Jared from The Great Order, because mm-hmm. I was thinking about how whites, he, they, they're into white well-being, and whites mm-hmm. doing well for themselves and being honest and straight up with everybody, including the blacks, is good for everybody. It's good for the blacks because then you guys are more exposed to the truth because the preachers don't tell the truth, the politicians, the parents, they they have no truth in them. So might as well truth come from the whites to the blacks. And Uh that's, that's good for the blacks. And the whites really don't have ill will towards the blacks. The whites don't celebrate in the destruction. We don't celebrate in black on black crime or black on white crime. We report on it where we're like, oh, what a pain. But um, yeah. but we're not into yeah. the, your destruction. Okay. But for some yeah. reason, yeah. you seem like you're into the destruction of the whites. Like you're excited I about am. the I destruction. Am. I am. Yeah, Isn't I am. that you think that's of God to be into the destruction uh, yeah. of the whites? The destruction of your enemies. Yes. Of course, wow. Absolutely. All right. Keep yeah. on justifying I think, but, but I, it. I don't I think you've actually repented of sin, then, man. Feeling, I have repented of sin because I right. will never, I will never harm my brother. Okay. You're not my brother. All right. What I, what I do but know, you're mixed. What I do you're mixed with us. You, Did you know that you're mixed with us? Hey, hey. Are you are you dark black or are you mixed with us? I'm dark. <laughs> hey. Yeah, right. <laughs> Listen up. All right. You guys, you guys mock and ridicule us with the whole oh they sh- they're shooting each other up. We, Y'all laugh uh, at that. I, I've seen, I've heard it and seen it. That may be. There may be. That may be true among so some people because we're like so we're rejoicing in our calamity. That, there may be. There may be some truth to that because there are some whites who are just sick of you guys. So there may be some who are doing yeah. that. But by and large, right. the the serious right. the serious ones like us, uh, like me and um, <laughs> others who are are talking about the white plight. Hey. <laughs> we're not into that. You you, don't, you have real. no idea. You're projecting your malice onto you me real, when I don't have the malice you, towards you. You you speak real slick when it comes to concerning oppression. Mm-mm, I don't have that the high of I don't have that high of verbal like IQ. You don't have the compassion <laughs> for the poor, like you said. It's like I seen a I seen a, a interview you did a few years back with Vox, and Vox really did you and your kids. Uh, okay, that just shows that you're a female minded like, thinker. But hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. He said, when he said when he said that. Uh, he wants. To, he wants to help the poor. That's Christ. That is Christ like. No, it's not. He's supposed to help the poor because no. Christ, Christ helped the poor. Christ came to the poor. He said it, in it, Christ's it, it, it time there was actual man. poor people. You said something about. You said something Hold on, about, man. Uh, Hold on, man. Oh, I got to stop rich. you there. I got to stop you there. In Christ's time, there were actual poor people. They didn't get but like one meal a day. There is no poor in America. Give oh. me a break. <laughs> You're a female-minded <laughs> communist sucker. Useful idiot. If you. Believe jo- Vosh made See, a good point. This, this is what I'm talking about. You, you're coming at me like that, and I, why? So because you, 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 you're because you, 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 you're agreeing you, with this you, radical you LGBT person. Hold on, you, let no, me explain you, why you're coming at you like that. Because so Vosh, hold on, man, hold on, man. That sounds like victimhood. I agree. I'm not like into you, that. that like a I'm not. I agree. I'm not into that. Anti-whitism. Hold, shut up. Ju- be quiet. I'm putting you on hold. Jeremiah's on hold. Um, he interrupts too much says Amethyst Skull. Yeah, I agree. Isn't that nice? Peace and quiet. Do you hear that? Um, Vosh is all into the... He, I remember, I had a flashback <laughs> of Vosh saying, You're degenerate because you don't have any compassion for the LGBT. Uh, or something to that effect, right? And I'm like, no, I just don't go along with what's right. I mean, I don't go along with what's wrong about it, Right? I don't know that it's right, and it doesn't seem right, so I'm not going to go along and pretend that it's right. And same thing with the uh, so-called poor stuff, this help of the poor, which only enables the mass homelessness that we're seeing. So, Jeremiah, you're, you're off. You're agreeing with the communist, which is not Christian. I'm not, I'm not off, Hank. He was right when he said that Christ helped the poor. And you're saying that you would not help the poor. That's that's female thinking. All right. Well, Christ is female, so you're saying Christ is female thinking? No, because Christ wouldn't do what he what the communists are doing regarding the so-called poor in America today. Which is what what 
what what are you talking about? What are they doing? They're letting the homelessness go out of control. They are they are pandering and giving. You don't the, think the homeless hold on, man. Hold on, man. I'm answering your question. They're they're paying people not to work. That's not what Christ was about. Christ was about. He was about helping your neighbors. If you if you no 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 no. I'm helping you anyway. I gotta go. You gotta go. Of course. Of course. Bye. What a mess. Of course. Yes. Of course. Anyway, I will get to more of your calls, guys. Um, hang tight. Let me read some super chats though first. By the way, Social Pariah is the guy, the first the first caller of today, and he's the one who told me about uh, that uh, conspiracy theory movie with Mel Gibson, which people, somebody else recommended. Bibby did a bad thing. Forty two with the super chat on Streamlabs.com/slash The Hate Report. Black History Month is a phony. It was built on lies. Let us continue rejoicing. James Hake's birthday celebration extravaganza. Happy birthday, Hake. You the man. You the man. Thank you. Appreciate that. Your girlfriend with a super chat over there on streamlabs.com slash the Hake Report says, Mr. Reagan fell for the climate nonsense when governor of California... C-E-Q-A, Sequa, Sequa, which caught, oh, Mr. Reagan, as in, I was thinking that you were talking about the YouTuber, Mr. Reagan, so Mr. Reagan, as in Ronald Reagan, fell for the uh, climate nonsense when he was governor of California, Sequa, C-E-Q-A, all caps, I don't know what that's a reference to, which caused housing costs to skyrocket. As president, he signed the Immigration Reform and Control Act of 1986, granting amnesty for illegals. Yeah, what a sucker. And that was supposed to be in exchange for border security, which we never got. Shame on him for that one. Wouldn't you agree? Thank you, your girlfriend. I appreciate that. Some valid complaints about the legacy, if you will. I think, perhaps, of uh, Ronald Reagan. There you go again. Venti soy latte. When is your book coming out, Hake? <laughs> uh, I wasn't aware I had a book coming out. Who knows? Uh, uh, is Hake going to write a book? Hmm. Don't know, <laughs> Venti soy latte. That's kind of you to ask. Willie Powell with, over there on streamlabs.com slash the Hake Report. Great interview last night at... No White Guilt YouTube channel. TheAfterParty.tv Also, what did you do to Hunter that he's so scared? It's a good question. Ledge Klinger over there on Odyssey. Jeremiah, meaning my prior caller, whom everybody loves, is mess on top of mess. Keep exposing the stupid people, Hank, with the uh, thumbs up. I appreciate that, Ledge Klinger. Thank you for the, um, for the, uh, support. I see a, uh, I see a screenshot of the, one of the acts of the first Congress of the United States. About, uh, interesting, there's some interesting conversation going on over there. Just put it, put it that way. Very cool. Um, and you know what? There were a few YouTube chats and things that I wanted to read. And Odyssey. <laughs> Regarding, uh, that black Canadian guy who was, who was complaining about the, as he called it, swastika. <laughs> Why he say it like that? Asked Shaggy Boy. Your girlfriend says, he made swastika sound like a black woman's name. Swastika? <laughs> Uh, your girlfriend says about Hunter Avalone, whom I shall debate, I guess, next Saturday, the 12th, he, at 9 a.m. Pacific, on Modern Day Debate YouTube channel. He wants to pretend he has cold feet so you'll be caught off guard once he finally shows up to the debate, <laughs> maybe. Oh, uh, man. Well, interesting, guys. Appreciate that. Um, man. So before I get back to calls, let me talk about this Freedom Convoy 
I heard that it was declared an unlawful assembly. And these guys, and, you know, I, I, I like going to protests. I like supporting them. I don't know what all they do, how much they do, but I like to, uh, you know, get your voice out there. Even people who do lawsuits and things, like over in the Jesse Lee Peterson show covered this. I covered it too earlier this week, I think it was. Uh, Giovanni Patterson over there who, who ran for city council in Baltimore, Maryland. Beautiful Baltimore, Maryland. Once beautiful. I think it can be beautiful once again. Where they had the Freddie Gray and Black Lives Matter insurrection and terror attacks and riots in the name of a drug dealer. Obama sent two representatives at the White House to go to Freddie Gray's funeral. The black guy who got his spine severed when he got arrested because he ran from the cops. He's a drug dealer. And the Black Lives Matter scumbags uh, tore apart the place. And the black female mayor gave them room to destroy. And the state's attorney said, I, we hear your cries of no justice, no peace. So she's a, a, talking like a black activist, an unreasonable black activist. Um, it's ridiculous. I don't know how I got on that, but I'm talking about the Ottawa, the Ottawa protest, Freedom Rally protest. Ottawa police chief may call in the military to handle the protest. This is a national issue, not an Ottawa issue, the police chief said. Police chiefs tend to be phony politicians, not honorable cops. And perhaps not every cop is honorable, right? <laughs> a lot of them are dumb liberals. I mean, there's a lot of black cops who are all into the black thing and victimhood thing. But, it's not, but, but not all. Some of them start to see reality or some of them are uh, truly solid guys. Ottawa's chief of police suggested Wednesday the Canadian Armed Forces might have to be called in to handle the lingering protesters in the Canadian capital. Increasingly concerned that there is no policing solution to this. And maybe there's some bad actors among this stuff, so uh, those of you who are of good will, you might want to you might want to clear on out of there, get away from potential trouble, because they want to use drama, they want to make drama, and then clamp down on anybody who's, like, honorable. You know, they did it to the Charlottesville people, they did it to the January 6th people, and they're doing it to anybody they can. There's a lot of young men who got doxxed for uh, doing shenanigans, but they're just trying to they're trying to narrow their misguided way to fight for what they think is right, right? Be wise. So I don't know. But there's a whole bunch of trucks parked in the, parked in the streets. Ottawa, beautiful area sometimes. Crazy. But they're sick of it. A small minority thought it acceptable. To uh, carry swastikas. <laughs> and uh, I heard that they were carrying the swastikas because they were accusing the, the Canadian government of being Nazis. It's not the worst thing you can call them. Call them commies. But I guess commie is acceptable. It doesn't hit so hard. Because we don't live in reality. <laughs> we live in a phony, uh, a phony propaganda world. What a mess, huh? Terrible. I want to tell you about this Spotify situation in a sec. But first, let me get to Jermaine in Atlanta, Georgia. First time caller. Jermaine, thanks for calling, man. How is it going? Hey, how you doing? Doing fine. Hey, nice, nice to talk to you, Hank. Yeah. Okay, so I, had a, I was, I was going to ask you about the Freedom Convoy, but you've already answered that question earlier. What was your question going to be? Uh, no, I just, no, just want what you thought about it. Oh, okay. All. Yeah, I, I yeah. haven't paid a lot of attention to it, but I just know that it's going on, and I hear a lot of, I see a lot of tweets and things and telegram messages, and I support the people who want freedom. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, one more, one more question too. I, I heard Jesse speak on this earlier today with another caller about a bipolarism. 
I never believed in that. What, what about you? Bipolarism. That's where you're... I think that that's an intellectual description of when you're up and down, right? Um, I don't really believe in that stuff either. I think that your mind does get uh, get messed, not your, but the general you. People's people's minds get messed up in different ways when their spirits are wrong. And so the spirit affects the body, and the body affects the, the mind. So, yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I always looked at it as if, as because when I hear about the symptoms, I'm thinking, okay, especially with people that claim that they have it, this so-called disease. <laughs> and th- then they then they say, okay, so usually their father's not around, and then they're 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 not close to God. So I said, okay, there's a problem right there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but no, they wanna they wanna bring in medication. It's kind of like the transgender mess. They don't want to solve yeah. the root issue. They want to they want to do an outside false solution that just gets them deeper into mess. I agree. I, I yeah. agree. Well, I want to tell you happy birthday again. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that, man. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Have a good day. Cool. And shout out to the Anchor Baby and Jesse too. Nice, man. You catch the Anchor Baby's new show? Not yet. I want to. I want to catch it. Is, is it every Friday? I can't remember. It's it's so far. It's been every Friday, uh, five p.m. And he goes two, three hours, and it's okay, chill, nice. man. It's 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 a great atmosphere. I like it. Okay, I'll ch- he plays music. I'll ch- he plays clips. Talks about stuff going on. Takes calls. Uh, he takes calls through uh, Google Voice. I think a phone number different from the regular calling number for. Hake and Jesse, at least at this point. So, how do you do that? What is Google Voice? Well, it's the phone number. You just call the phone number that he puts on the screen. He'll put it on the screen, or he may even shout it out. Um, okay. And he doesn't take calls. At least last time I saw, I didn't see this past week. But when he wasn't taking, he wouldn't always be taking calls, but he would open it up. Oh, you guys can call in. Here's the number. So, uh, yeah. It was cool. I think you'll enjoy it, especially for a Friday night, a nice Friday night stream. It's cool. I don't doubt it. (laughs) Great to hear from you, Jermaine. Give me another call sometime. Yeah, no problem. All right. Take care. Bye. Okay, guys. We are at just about the top of the hour. I have Dean in North Carolina. I almost said NorCal, but that's not it. North Carol. Dean in North Carolina. A couple of North Carolina callers. Um. Art in Ohio and uh, others. One line open, guys. 888-775-3773. But first, I gotta play some music for you. I did not find this music on Spotify. I found it before I ever heard of Spotify. Maybe before Spotify existed. This is from Human Television. Track is entitled In Front of the House. It's the last main track, I guess, on the 2006 album on Gigantic Music record label called Look at Who You're Talking To. Here's In Front of the House by Human Television. Enjoy, and I'll be right back for hour two. Hang tight.
this song is not great, states Ashley over there at Facebook. Shout out to the Facebook crew. The music has been good lately, but this, nah, says Ashley. Shout out to the Facebook crew. LCD television system, says uh, Fianor. You are listening to Hake Radio, says Uriel. Chill music to relax while watching over... uh, Jeremiah, work on my plantation, says Joshua, everything. Whoa, whoa. Um, ever heard of the band Alvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvv
It's so weird. Somebody bro. says it it's not sounds- weird, Hake. It's what Elon Musk is into. That doesn't make it <laughs> sound not weird to me. It's weird. <laughs> Although it's I weird, have a, dude. it's weird. I have somewhat of a general positive impression of of that guy. I, not completely positive, but I I find I, him a likable guy and mildly somewhat interesting, somewhat more honest than uh, the mainstream media. But that doesn't say much. I don't care to say I don't really put, place judgment on anybody. Like I don't care what people yeah. think about other people or anything. I don't. You know, if I meet you and how I how we interact is how I'm gonna go on to the world and be like, hey, that's how I interacted with him. Right. Kind of right. like sounds like a Whoopi Goldberg talking about uh, Mel Gibson. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> because she said he's not a racist. He's been to my house. He's a he's a right. nice. He's a great guy. Something like that. Right. According to some clip that old clip that JLP played on his show, I think. Did he? Bro, play he it? played the Patriot. I think he played it. Right. Nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I just want to hit the touch on that, bro. I'll give you something. To just, I'm sure you already knew. I I don't really pay You're a man of God, attention. bro. You've already, you've already transhuman, bro. You're a man. <laughs> oh, man. Don't say transhuman. That sounds LGBT. No, nah, don't get in your head with it. Well, then don't say it. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, man. It's good to hear from you. All right, brother. Later. All right. Take care. <laughs> man. Before I get back to calls, lines are full, guys. Hang tight. I gotta tell, I gotta talk about this attack on free and true speech. And it's, you know, it's even, they don't even want the liberals to have any free speech if they're gonna go out, color outside the lines, if you will. <laughs> Commie Nonsense Network quotes this guy saying, We're trying to balance creative expression with the safety, safety, of our users. He didn't say safety twice, I just said it twice for effect. Safety of our users. It's a, it's a streaming music and podcasting platform. Spotify, Swedish company, Spotify, CEO, Swedish 38-year-old billionaire, Daniel Ek. I have a couple, I have a few pictures of this guy. Daniel Ek grew up in Stockholm, Syndrome. <laughs> I call it Stockholm Syndrome. But it's Stockholm, Sweden, which is, I guess, the capital of Sweden. For some reason, Stockholm Syndrome is a term for loving your abusers. And even this man, I don't know what's wrong with him or if anything's wrong with him, but he seems to be playing along with the ways of the world. And yet, this guy, Daniel Eck, and he's, he's do, saying this stuff because Spotify paid like $100 million to get, uh, to get Joe Rogan's podcast to be exclusive to Spotify, right? Over the controversy surrounding comedian and podcast host, he's like le- least known as a comedian, honestly, Joe Rogan. He's not that funny. I've been to a, th- a thing where Joe Rogan and some others talked when Dylon, my de facto producer, first came into town. We went and saw a few guys talk and Joe Rogan was the least of the funny people. He had a somewhat memorable, I was surprised how sh- sh- relatively short he was. Not bashing him. But I prefer his podcasts and his uh, UFC commentary. I don't know him as a comedian. But anyway, uh, Joe Rogan, who's interviewed some people who are kind of independent thinking. Sometimes they may say stuff that may or may not be true, I don't know. But so, so do the mainstream media, give me a break. But they want... You, everyone to hype the vax. And they want to go along with the hype and not question the hype. Not to question the, as one guy called it, mass formation hyco- psychosis. Right? They call it mass formation ch- psychosis. Some people call it groupthink. I call it hype. Or the, co- the commie virus scare. They used to call it the red scare, the... Uh, the, the concerns about communists taking over in America, the red, they called it a red scare as if it was just a scare and there was no validity to it. Well, it turns out the red scare, I don't know if it was completely right, but it was, it was right. It was, there is legitimate enemies of America, un-American activities to this day and now more than ever in America. To this day! 
all want to be all dismissive. I've heard that that uh, Wikipedia, the commies, revisionist historians, in Wikipedia are trying to erase the uh, destruction that communism has wrought on human beings across history. I've heard that. Uh, Mike Cernovich has been retweeting people saying that. And I believe it, because, you know, these people are not honest. And the mob, uh, crowdsourced history, it turns out, may not be as honest as, as, uh, alternative facts. Right? Right. So anyway, uh, last week, the elderly washed up artists like Neil Young, you remember that? Neil Young and Joni Mitchell asked the streaming company Spotify to pull their music from the platform because of Joe Rogan, my competitor. He's a liberal. I've talked about him a lot recently. Who has made frequent false and misleading claims, says CNN. (laughs) Very fake news, CNN. Uh, uh, Such hypocrites, but they don't care. About the China virus and vaccines on his popular podcast, The Joe Rogan Experience. Following the backlash, Spotify has said that they're adding con- a content advisory to any podcast episode that includes a discussion about the China virus. What a mess. So phony. I want to tell you a little bit of interesting background on this. Uh, you know, I find some of these CEOs interesting. So some interesting background from CEO Magazine, out six, article out 16th of April 2021 about this Daniel Eck guy. He's a billionaire, 38 years old, billionaire, Swedishman, started his first b- business at 13. And this is that third headline that I showed. I got this from this article. Retiring at 23 years old. And then he went to s- co-found Spotify, which if I don't really use that service. I just use what used to be iTunes. It's now Apple Music. Because in 2013, I got an iPhone, right? Late 2013. <laughs> Late adopter. Example of, is an example of startup Mavericks propelling their companies to billion-dollar valuations. Look at this guy. No hair on the top of his head. Looks so young. He's wearing a Spotify hoodie. <laughs> Spotify. Music. But then they got into podcasting. And why well, I'm on Spotify, too. At least for the time being. Daniel X. The 38-year-old Swedish Spotify co-founder built an extraordinary career by never accepting the status quo and and insisting others bend to his whim. However ridiculous that it seemed, at every turn. Yeah, those guys are just hard to work for. Reminds me of Donald Trump, maybe. So I respect that uh, worldly success, if you will. I don't know what kind of person this guy is. But it turns out, this he came across... I came across this in this article, his favorite quote, it starts out this way, Daniel X, favorite quote is from this guy, and I have a picture of him, he's a dead guy, George Bernard Shaw, who went by Bernard Shaw, 1856 was was when he was born, 1950 he died, lived to be 90 something, I guess, right? Long dead Irish playwright and activist, was this guy a communist? He might have been. But ex-favorite Bernard Shaw quote was this. Listen to this. Kind of, kind of interesting. M- to me, it is. The reasonable man adapts himself to the world. The unreasonable one persists in trying to adapt the world to himself. Isn't that so true? Therefore, all progress depends on the unreasonable man. <laughs> interesting, huh? Or as Trump says, let's make a deal. Let's make a deal, because you have to make deals, right? Isn't that interesting? So this Bernard Shaw guy, according to Wikipedia, I looked him up, he promoted eugenics and alphabet reform. I don't know what that is. (laughs) He opposed vaccination. Interesting. Whoa! He opposed vaccination, even back then. And he opposed organized religion. He courted unpopularity by denouncing both sides in the First World War as equally culpable. Interesting. Takes two to tango, he might have been right. He even looks like a commie, says uh, Gigi. Yeah, 
And he also wrote about vegetarianism. Commie confirmed, female-minded liberal, but he's had some interesting things. Wikipedia's word for it is following an awakening, he joined the gradualist Fabian Society. Sounds not morally straight. Is that, am I pronouncing it right? Fabian Society? I don't know much about the Fabian Society, but they seem like they don't want crazy violent revolution. They want to gradually turn into communists or socialists, right? I don't know. That's what it sounds like to me. He became one of its most prominent, pa- its most, most prominent pamphleteer. So he was promoting this propaganda, right? Pro, like, socialist propaganda, I guess. Which I don't know if that, I don't know if this guy is a decent guy or not. By the late 1920s, though, he had largely renounced Fabian society gradualism and often wrote and spoke favorably of dictatorships of the left and right. Again, that's Wikipedia's word, left and right. He expressed admiration for both Mussolini, who was the Irish, was he the Irish fascist guy? Was he an Irish fascist guy? Something like that? And Stalin. Uh, Stalin, who was a communist. Mussolini, was he supposed to be right wing? I don't know. <laughs> what a mess. Uh, it's funny because they accused Trump of, of praising Mussolini Italian. Yeah. They accused Trump of praising dictators. He got along with the tyrants. He even said himself. Uh, whatever. Just found that mildly interesting. The, the reasonable man adapts himself to the world. The unreasonable man persists in trying to adapt the world to himself. Therefore, all progress depends on the unreasonable man. Unreasonable man. And there are evil, pe- evil unreasonable people. There's no reasoning with the, these enemies of America. You just say, no, you be unreasonable for what's right. That's why they hate. They hate Jesse Lee Peterson. They are... There are people who've been interviewed by JLP or who were invited to interview. They hate him because he just steamrolls over their stuff. He doesn't even get sucked in. It reminds me of your girlfriend's quote from that Proverbs, what was that, 26.4 or something like that? Answer not a, a, a fool according to his folly, lest you be, I don't know, sucked in and stuff like that. And being an intellectual at times or... I might be like a recovering intellectual. I get sucked into arguing on their terms. But no, he just steamrolls, stays on point with the truth. And he'll just completely reject and call you a liar. Even if you say something that might technically be true, but you're making the wrong point about it, right? Which the commies love to do, cherry pick facts in order to lie with facts. You hear it frequently from that rhino communist guy, um, Joe from Phoenix, Arizona. (laughs) Sorry, Joe from Phoenix. Well, not sorry, but it's true. You're just such an intellectual. You just just uh, deceive. Shaw was a Fabian socialist. Definitely a commie, says uh, Big Bump. By the way, he says the Federal Reserve was under Wilson's administration. The creature from Jekyll Island. Whoa. Big Bump with the history. Nice. So, um... You know, and I'm going to get to these phonies who are pushing the masks on everybody and then they don't wear them themselves. Uh, But I kind of like that quote from George Bernard Shaw. Whatever. Um, Let me get to Howard from North Carolina. How are you doing, Howard? Thanks for waiting. How are you? I'm doing. Oh, sorry. Go for it. uh, Doing well. How about you? Doing well. I'll I'll talk to you. You're coming in very good. Very soft and breaking up. Stay close to your phone. Stay in a, a place away from electronics so that you're coming through loud and clear. How about now? That sounds okay. Let's do it. Yes. Uh, uh, I called about that Brian Flores guy. Could, about, could I touch on Whoopi right quick? Just yeah, of course. Things. You can touch on Brian Flores, the black NFL coach who's suing the NFL I'll for racial discrimination. Right first. Could I touch on Whoopi yeah, you right can first? talk about Whoopi Goldberg, the... Uh, she just proved Jesse's point. There's no such thing as racism. <laughs> yeah, she did by accident. <laughs> yeah, by she should have said. She should have said the black thing was not about race either. It's about yes. inhumanity yes. of the blacks hating the whites. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Yeah. That was amazing. I thought Jess had ever thought that I'd hear that discussed on TV. <laughs> nice. Uh, about uh, Brian Flores, though, and, you know, the Rooney, Rooney Rule. Yeah, the NFL Rooney Rule, bringing affirmative yeah. action. You have to interview Offer. two. The Rooney Rule, just to explain to the people, you have to interview yeah. at least two POCs, minorities, uh, before you hire a, uh, a white coach. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Ridiculous. Uh, uh, National Football was, uh, League. Pro football. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if I was a, a, a black coach, I would, or any, I would want to do away with that Rooney rule. Yeah. If it went there, they would know for, they were interviewing them for their, uh, for their talent, not just because they have to. Yeah. It's a that slap in the face. Actually goes, it actually goes against them. Yeah. It's do offensive. It's offensive yeah, it's to offensive. everyone. Yes. So female. I would, if I was a self-respecting black person, I know they, they're out there, so there's some out there. One or two. I wouldn't want them <laughs> interviewing me just because I was black. I wouldn't want them interviewing me because of the th- they think I was qualified, not just because they had to because I was black. Yeah, exactly. And that we have... And it's... So, Right. And we have de facto affirmative action too, because I think affirmative action is, at least um, on colleges, is is against the law in California. Believe it or not, unless I'm mistaken, I could be That's mistaken. Sorry. Affirmative Sorry. affirmative action in college on colleges is yeah. illegal in California, or it was struck down, I think. But they do it yeah. de facto anyway. I oh, think. Okay. I could be mis- I, I could I'm- be completely mistaken, but I thought that I heard something like that, like the UC I heard system. Y'all talking about that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's. <laughs> I think you still do it de facto too, and then you just you just don't hear or know about it. Right. Uh, <laughs> I would not if I was a coach. I should apply to the players too. They get the most qualified players, right? Wow. Um, if yeah, want, if yeah. you know what? There is all of this pro, oh, let's do these programs for black athletes to be black athletes. So even even among the athletes, that's not just pure, raw, ra- natural talent that makes them the vast majority. There is, yeah. there is some affirmative action even on that level. Even though they might, they might still be the, the majority even without that affirmative action. I don't know. But there is definitely this program, and oh, get into this athletic stuff. It's it's your you're out. It's your way out of the ghetto. <laughs> what a mess! Yeah. It's your ticket by to that, success. Yeah, by their reasoning, well, about inclusion and all this stuff. Yep. They they should have to interview two two Mexicans. Two women for the football team. Two transsexuals. They should have all, oh, yeah. team, all, on, all on the football team. <laughs> right. Not good. They, uh, but I understand your other point. Yeah. It seems like they, they go after the best players, no matter if they're black or white. And a lot of times, some of the black ones are. Most of them are. Yeah. Better players, you know. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe yeah, so. I don't know either. It's, it's just a mess. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> I appreciate could it, I, Howard. It's good to hear yeah, from you. Could I, touch, could I touch on the the Hebrew is lots? I ordered my question wrong to Nick. If I can't, sure. I understand. I understand totally. Go for it. Because I asked him, I asked him the question the wrong way, and he corrected me. What was I, your I What was your question? What was your issue with the Black Israelites? Because I named a certain person, and he said we're not going in this. He said he said. Oh, nice. And I don't want to do that. <laughs> but could I address the Hebrew Israelites? Go ahead. Or, or not? I said go ahead. This is my third time okay. telling you, man. <laughs> well, you know, you get your mind on something, and you, and, you, and somebody saying something, it just goes kind of goes by, <laughs> and they don't catch it. What did you want? What did you want to say I'm about the Israelites? Uh, you know, in Colossians, in the Bible, they believe in the Bible. I guess they believe in Jesus, too, you know. In Colossians, it says that uh, Jesus done away with all of that. He uh, 
he put the shame, the Pharisees and all that, about the law, the way they preached about it. You had to follow this, follow that. He said, Don't, he's not supposed to judge a man by what he eats, what he drinks, or his Sabbath, or festivals, and all that. Uh, Jesus was all about love. He nailed, we could, he nailed that to the cross. There's no way... Uh, I can't get the words to uh, come to mind now. It's all in my mind, but when I get on, I understand how Zach feels the other day. He could get it to come out right. That young guy that was talking, the younger guy, he was just so unsure about how he was saying it, and he wasn't saying it right. Uh-huh. Uh huh. They all caught up in the law and all this, like the Pharisees was, and we're this, we're that, and uh. Jesus nailed all that stuff to the cross. It's all about love. Love your neighbors. Uh, love covers a multitude of sins. You know what I'm talking about, what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And they just seem like they're so full of hate. Right. They need to drop, they need to drop the hate. Yeah, true. And hate, I think you're doing a great job. I hope I'm coming across... Makes yeah. Sense, you know, for the people that are listening and to you, they need to drop all that hate. They seems like they have a lot of hate against everybody. Yeah. And you know, you don't never hear nothing about you know Mexico. The Spaniards come and took over Mexico. You know, the conquest yep. of the you studied all that. And they interbreded and again, with them. They intermarried. Right. I assume they married. I don't know. Maybe they just breeded and didn't marry. And uh, get caught, and Jesse wants to know about the Jews and the Germans. Uh huh. It'd be very hard to find an unbiased report on that. Somebody just wanted to look at the facts that, that wasn't on the Jew side or the German side. Good luck on him finding somebody <laughs> yep. that has an unbiased report on that. Yeah. I wish I could find one, but everyone I've looked up, it's biased. Yeah, true. Uh, Maybe God will reveal it to it to him one day, and and Jesse's so right about the like you were talking about him before. I guess all about love and being your own person and an individual. Yeah, and uh, it's just mind blowing to see this stuff going on. Yep. And, uh, well, I thank you for the like input, it. Howard. It's good to hear from you. Yeah, it's good. Uh, yeah, and. Uh, I had an auto accident, you know, about your back. When was that, your auto accident? September the 18th. Oh, really? Somebody, somebody come over on my side of the road, and it was either hit them head on or hit hit the ditch. Ooh. So I hit the ditch, and, uh-huh. went, and the car went down. It just, when I felt it, went down against the seat, it just felt like somebody shot me in the back. Ouch. I had a, a compression, fra- it fractured one of my vertebrae. Yeah. And I hadn't been working since then. I've had a lot. I think I've told you about my back before having back surgery. I've had a lot of problems with my back. And like I told Jesse, I was laying in the hospital, and uh, it hurt so bad. And that uh, pain medication they were giving me, yeah, it was so strong it made me feel so sick on my stomach, and my back hurt so bad. I told him I felt like I was going to pass. He said, "You mean drop your body?" I said, "Yes." And then, I, like he said, I just relaxed in all of that. Yeah. And I didn't really, I, I, the first time in my life, I wasn't terrified of dying. I just relaxed in it and trusted in God. I said, if you take me, or if I live. And they finally, I kept telling about that medicine, and they took it off, took me off of it. And I felt like a different person got my appetite back, and now I'm a lot better, and I'm up walking. Yeah. And uh, maybe I'll get my job back next month, he said. The doctor's got to fully release me. Well, that's cool. And I've been through a lot, and Jesse's helped me a lot. You've helped me a lot. That's cool, I man. Just, I like the way you, you handle the hate in Jesse. Y'all just tell the truth. Yeah. And, and I'm taking up your time. I know you got other callers. You, you want to talk. I like art. <laughs> <laughs> right on, Howard. He, he is a character, but he tells the truth. Yeah. And uh, I, uh, I'll let you go. Sounds good, man. Okay. All right. Bye. Take care. Wow. Um, 
a super chat or two. A- Asmodor with the super chat on Odyssey, O D Y S E E dot com slash at the Hake Report. James, I don't think the Avalon debate is happening. And he shares a screenshot from a Twitter tweet, a twitlonger.com long post Twitter. <laughs> Hunter Avalon tweeted out an hour ago, or an hour and a half ago, I am indefinitely stepping down from social media, says Hunter Avalon. And he goes, I know some will be happy and others disappointed. I am indefinitely stepping away from all social media, not sure when I'll be back. Mental health, mental health has gotten to a place where I no longer want to produce content. Whoa, depression has taken over my life and I need, this is Hunter Avalon talking, I'm not, I'm not talking. Depression has taken over my life and I need to seek help absent from social media. There will still be YouTube uploads of my recent stream segments and debates, but I will not be active on Twitter, producing new content or regularly streaming for an indefinite amount of time. Hopefully after I begin to recover, I can return to regular streaming and content creation with a new attitude. I may still stream occasionally depending on my mood, but I cannot afford the pressure of constant content production with my current condition. I may be back next week or I may be back next year. I appreciate the support so many have shown me and hope I can return sooner than later. Thanks for understanding. Goodbye, Hunter. Hunter Avalon. Am I pronouncing his name right? And his Twitter handle is Hunter AA6. So, is he married? I thought that I heard that he was married. Official Hunter Avalon Twitter account run by his manager. All tweets are opinions of Hunter Avalon and the guy you love to hate. Oh, the guy you love to hate. I don't hate him. I don't even know. But, uh, well, thank you for the tip on that, Asmodor. Yeah, there's always a lot. There's always more going on than you realize. I broke him. I broke him. <laughs> nah, I don't know. Um, so I wish you well, sir. Hunter Avalon. Um, a bunch of other streamers, Elijah Schaefer, Heem, whom I may talk to sometime, Vosh, who was on my show, and the Humanist Report, who interviewed JLP, and others, all like tweeting in reply to him. So uh, who knows what may happen? But as far as I know, the modern day debate is still scheduled. The systemic racism debate, whether it's me versus Hunter or it's me versus someone else. James Coons of Modern Day Debate was talking about, oh, maybe Hunter is going to contact Destiny or Vouch. He pronounced it. He spelled it Vouch. Vosh. We'll see. Hey, scared that guy off the internet, <laughs> says Noah's Ark, Kansas. Maybe his wife has b- bossed him around and he's depressed. I don't even know if he's married. I, it's total speculation. But uh, I wish the guy well. Whatever. Thank you, Asmodor. Um, ooh. Okay, let me quickly just mention this story before I get to... Art in Ohio. Uh, the masks, they don't care. You guys saw, so I never showed this on my show, but I saw like pictures of, uh, what's that guy's name? The governor of California, Gavin Newsom, the beta governor with the beta baby, <laughs> declaring a sanctuary state. The former mayor of San Francisco, his wife used to be. He had a wife, one of his wives, past wives, was Kimberly Guilfoyle, the Trump supporter lady who's girlfriends with uh, Don Jr., whom I, I like Don Jr., but she's older than him, and she's already have, has children, or at least one child, almost a grown adult now. Kimberly Guilfoyle was wives with uh, Gavin Newsom, New- Gruesome Newsom, whom we tried to recall, right, in California. Disgraceful person forced the communist mandates on us and many of the locals, too. But I saw him with no mask at, like, a football game or something like that, or a baseball game. Probably a football game. And he was all buddy-buddy with Magic Johnson, the guy who had those AIDS. Magic Johnson, who 
who backstabbed, <laughs> I felt, backstabbed uh, Donald Sterling for not wanting him to hang out with Vivian, V. Stiviano. But uh, the L.A. mayor, too, took a maskless photo with Magic Johnson. Magic Johnson, no mask. Uh, mayor Eric Garcetti, who's overseen the greatest uh, explosion of so-called homelessness in, uh, in Los Angeles that we've seen in decades, or perhaps even ever. And he's not the only one. All up and down the, the left coast, the homelessness is out of control. It's ridiculous in every big city. I think. It's so disgusting over in San Francisco with the London breed, black female Democrat. So anyway, uh, according to Drudge, LA, Tear took, L.A. Mayor took a maskless photo with Magic Johnson. His defense? I'm holding my breath in that photograph. <laughs> he said that he was holding his breath. He was at Sophie's. Is it Sophie? Sophie? Sophie Stadium. That's where they're going to have the... Uh, I think that's... Inglewood, California, always up to no good. That's where they're going to have the Super Bowl, I think. Ooh, stay away from there. February 13th, Super Bowl. Stay away from Inglewood. Inglewood is always up to no good. That's where the Rams' home is. I stole that line from Tupac, just by the way. A, a dead rapper. Um, I think it was Tupac. Whatever. Governor Gavin Newsom, L.A. Mayor Eric Garcetti, and San Francisco Mayor London Breed. Magic Johnson was posing with several Democrat California politicians. London Breed posted her own maskless selfie from the game. And who cares if they're not wearing a mask? Nobody should. Am I right? Magic spitting on people with no masks, spreading the AIDS. (laughs) Nah. I think he's... I think he beat it. Um, None were wearing a mask. And who cares? They shouldn't. But the problem is that they force everybody else to, and they don't themselves. That's that communism stuff, right? Just make them adhere to the rules that they fall for, right? The female-minded, scared women. London Breed evidently is not scared. So... Anyway, that's that. That's that for that. I don't have any pictures. I don't, you don't want to see their faces. Let me get to Art in Ohio. Art, thank you for calling. How are you doing? How are you doing, Ohio? Doing well, man. Hey, and what's up to my crew? And then what's up to the chat? And shout out to that last caller. With, now, he's a good guy, just like, uh, just like you are. And, you know, uh... I want to uh, say I love Jeremiah when I went too fond of him at first or whatnot, you know what I mean? Yeah. he always would get on here and boast and brag or whatnot about, you know, stuff that Father God has laid out. But uh, if you don't mind, hey, uh, I want to read a couple passages for you and go ahead and get them out the way. Okay. Okay. E class, E class, E class, uh, 817, uh, 10. And this goes down to, there is an evil I have seen under the sun. The sort of error arises from rulers. Fools are put in many high positions while the rich occupy the low ones. That's that one. And this is where I go to Jeremiah, what he was, what he, uh, what made me, uh, look at what he was saying. Nations, okay, I'm sorry about that. Isaiah thirteen twenty two, fourteen two. Nations will take them and bring them to their own places, and Israel will take possession of nations and make the male and female servants in the Lord's land. They will make captives of their captors and rulers of their oppressors. On the day the Lord gives you relief from suffering, turmoil, and from harsh labor forced on you, you would take this up, take take up this taunt against the kings of Babylon. And uh, J- Jeremiah, he do a lot of taunting, but what I want to say to my brother Jeremiah 
is uh, you barking up the wrong tree and you talking to the wrong people. You know, hate and white males and uh, the true God fearing men like me and myself and you. And it's good. There's some good politicians, you know, and good judges and good police officers. Them is the wrong. You you don't want to taunt them. They uh that that ain't your aim. That ain't our aim, Jeremiah. Th- these are the uh these are the good ones. You see what I'm saying? These are the ones who gonna uh who are gonna receive the kingdom of heaven. So this stuff doesn't apply to haking them and the other good ones. They gonna be they gonna be cool. Their God doesn't have no beef with them. Okay. Then my second thing is I do agree with him that uh. You, did you want to say anything, Hank? Um, no, I appreciate that. You're, that's, a, that's a nice comment for a uh, message to him. Yeah, we're, we don't have ill will towards, towards blacks. Anyway, go on. Yeah. Well, you, know, you don't need to tell me that. I already know. Yeah. I've been here 35 years. I know, I know, I know what side of the field and, uh, and, who, and who's, uh, whose team is bad and whose team is good. The only thing you got to do is sit back and listen, you know, uh, Hake, Hake, you uh, you plant good seed, seeds. You see what I'm saying? And you've been doing it for a while, so I I know, I know how you are. You know what I mean? And that's uh, I gotta say thank you to your parents and your grandparents and whoever, because they did a good job with you. Same thing with the rest of the crew up there. You know, uh, likewise, you attract the same people that you are. So that's the, when I say that about you, I'm saying that to Nick. Daniel, Chris, Jesse, Joel, you know what I mean? Yeah. If you was evil, you would be around evil people. Birds of a feather flock together. So, Eric, when I'm saying these comments to you, that applies to the whole crew in the chat, most of the chat, because you got a couple agents in your chat. They (laughs) they only come around to, uh, you know, keep up. But with Jeremiah, I do agree with Jeremiah uh, was saying about uh, Russia and America. Um, And I love America. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm uh I'm all about the red, white, and blue. I uh I'm an eighties baby. I was born in eighty six. I know uh about the good side of America and it wasn't like this back in the my time when I was growing up, all this confusion and it's evil yeah. to where and it's and it's just ramped up right now, but uh it just has me mind boggled with these dirty politicians and all this stuff going over here on in here in America, how they think that they want to be able to uh, try to be over there in everybody else's business, especially with Russia. I'm not. We not scared. America's not scared of Russia. I know. Uh, but you know, we ain't no punks over here in America. And if whoever wants to fight with America, we're bringing to you. But at some point in time, when is enough enough? You know what I mean? America has their nose. My, they, America has their mama nose. Their mama liberal communist Viking. Uh, knows in everybody's business, yeah, and they don't know when to shut shut the uh, shut the heck up. They don't know when to get out of people's business. I agree. You know what I mean? I and, don't. I don't trust any of the people, the establishment, um, so-called American government that wants to involve themselves in this Ukraine mess. And yeah, in Ukraine they, is you know, Ukraine is not but, even really a mess. It's the the mess is the people panicking over it. So. And yep. fear, fear mongering over it. What a mess. Well, so I agree like with you. How America, you know, yeah, and just like how America, just like you was just saying, it's a mess because of the people, just like it is over here with all this stuff that was going on with the election. You see who who's in position, so don't nobody want to deal with no crook. It's just you like this. I mean? It's no. just like the scam demic. Honestly, the scam demic yeah. did not have to be as destructive to the economy. But the reaction to this scam, Demick, the overreaction to it, and it was, I think, purposeful and evil, was what did the destruction to the people and took a lot more lives than it needed to. So, it's crazy. Yes, it did. And not even that, where I look at it like it's a, a George Soros money grab. You see what I'm saying? He Them may be. Yeah, he's, he does metal, huh? Yeah. I don't know. Well, you got to remember, those politicians ain't got no money, man. Only one who really has some money is Donald Trump because he's self-made, <laughs> generational wealth. Right. You know what I mean. But otherwise, that if you if you a politician, your your parents or when ain't like Donald Trump's dad or whatnot, then you ain't got no money. So only people, only reason they get money is because they getting it through uh, uh scamming 
and through people like George Soros. And, you, and, and it's fun in all this, uh, all this nonsense, but at some point in time, somebody's going to have to throw a blow. Did you, you know s- what I mean? Did uh, you say Viking well, nose? You said communist something yeah. Viking nose? <laughs> yeah. Yep. They, uh, uh, what's that? What's that one? What's that one uh, cartoon where the the, uh, the dudes know every time he would lie, his nose would get bigger. Um, Pinocchio. But no, they got to say Pinocchio, Viking nose, and everybody's <laughs> this. Why? Why Viking? And, uh, may I ask? Why do you say Viking? Just out of curiosity. This is it's, uh, it's just uh, one of my little slurs I like to throw towards the libtards because they okay. definitely libtards. All right. Uh, and, yeah, you know, people don't like to deal with dishonest people. I don't like no thief. I don't like no liar. You know what I mean? Right. And uh, I'm pretty sure Russia don't want nobody uh, in their business or whatnot. Because especially when you got uh, in America, you ain't even handling your own business and take care of your own people. So you want to come over here into Russia and be trying to tell Russia what all to do when you can't even... Your own house ain't America's own house ain't even dirty. You got females in a lot of these high positions. Yep. Or we're not just destroying America and the kids is out here running around uh being destructive. You see what I'm saying? It's like, well, hold up. Why are you all up here trying to be a judge and a politician? Your kid is out here uh all messed up. You I know. need to be in the house. Doing your motherly duties and making sandwiches and uh, sweeping the house up and taking care of your man, but America's yeah. so messed up that they don't even know it had that concept. I know. And then, and then these and then these idiots over here are so crazy, they don't even understand and see that Russia and China's on the same side. So they do have an agenda. And once all this, once the ball gets to going and all this stuff starts taking off, it ain't going to be no turning back. And I'm going to tell you what America thinks that they're going to do. They think they're going to try to put Donald Trump back in here to uh, appease and calm everybody down. Like, oh, we're going to put him back in here. Y'all calm down. Everything's all right. And it ain't going to happen. It's not going to – once the ball gets to going and it, it, this stuff starts setting off or we're not with Russia and China, it ain't going to be no turning back. And uh, another thing towards Jeremiah, nah, uh, I'm not – I'm happy. I'm happy, you know, to uh, to meet uh, my maker. You know, I'm happy when Father God's ready to return. You know what I mean? But uh, I, I'll tell you what I ain't happy about. I'm not ha- happy about uh, seeing the loss of lives. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Kids, women, old people, men, unnecessary blood being shed. That's what hurts me. I don't want to see that. But it's going to be what it's going to be. You know what I mean? And, uh I had a dream last night, and I ain't Martin Luther King neither. No, no, no. I'm Artie Art Baby from Ohio. Uh-huh. Uh, I had a dream last night uh, that I was riding around, and I was like, uh, "Where's all the cars at?" It was like it was a everything. When no, really, no cars out. And then, uh, what's understood don't need to be explained. I got up this morning or whatnot, and I just I got to think, and I said, "What was that all about?" And they, they all set off into me or whatnot about the Russian stuff with this pandemic. It ain't nothing but a prophecy, and I'll let the viewers and you figure that out or whatnot. Uh, well, I appreciate it, and, Art. Uh, yeah, uh, I want to tell you, uh, thank you uh, so much, you and Jesse, because a lot of stuff that I've been through and went through in my life, uh, I have called y'all, and y'all don't kept me calm. You nice. know what I mean? That's good. That's uh, important. That's so important. Yeah, uh, and one more thing, and I'm going to get up off of here. I don't trust the government. I don't trust, uh, not all, not all, not all, but most. I don't trust the government. I don't trust you doctors. And uh, I want questions and answers about this vaccine stuff. And my grandmother, my my grandmother, my great aunt taking these vaccines, and all of a sudden they don't die. That's what I want to know about. Because uh, Artie Art from Ohio, baby. <laughs> I love my grandmother. All right. And, uh, she shouldn't have had to, you know what I mean? And that, that that's, that's hurt me. But I ain't going to get over here and get to acting like a beta. Yeah. But uh, I definitely love, and I, I love all old people. Right. You know what I mean? And you shouldn't be taking care of, uh, taking advantage of old people and kids and people that don't know right from wrong. 
Yeah, I agree. Let people be. Leave people alone. But God bless you, Hank. I'm going to get up off here. I don't been on here long enough. And I appreciate you for the time or whatnot. And I appreciate you for your ear and the same to the chat. I'll catch up with you later, Gator. Sounds good, man. Take care. Appreciate it. Art from Ohio. Um, yeah, it's a shame. They are trying to force vaccinate. Well, I say force, but they're trying to give the emergency use authorization for babies to get the so-called vaccine. Who is that, Moderna or is that Pfizer? They're all the same. Pushing the vax on babies, six months old, up to kids, young children, four-year-olds. Everybody under five, six months to five years old. They're already doing five to 11-year-olds. I think that's emergency use authorization, as if it's an emergency. They just want to, I guess that's the thirst for knowledge and thirst for maybe money. I, I guess money is a big motivator for some, for many. And uh, it's just meddling. So wrong. Let me get to Rick in Maine. Uh, oops. Rick in Maine, how are you doing? Not bad, getting rained on here in southern Pennsylvania. How you <laughs> doing today? Doing fine, thank you. All right. Uh, a couple of quick points here. I know I haven't got too much time. Uh, I sent a couple of articles to Nick there you may want to take a look at. But, uh, thank there's you. There's been quite a history history on this, uh, this vaccine crap and using the uh, military as a bunch of guinea pigs. It all shows it in that newspaper article. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're forcing the vax on the people, young, healthy military members yeah. who are fit. And they do not need to force it on these <laughs> six months old to five months old kids. Yeah. That is insanity. Yeah, it is. I agree. So, anyway. Yeah. Uh, the other point that I wanted to make is about this truck strike up in, um, well, a demonstration up in Canada. Uh, I've. I've been out here for 32, going on 33 years, and I've been through a few of those things. And the only thing is that ends up doing is it kicks off a whole bunch of people in high places, legislators, people in the uh, FMCSA and the DOT and all this other, all these other organizations that control the trucking industry. After the event is all over, all they want to do is get revenge and turn around and make more rules and regulations to drive us crazy out here. Yeah. So we're so not, you're not really for, accomplishing anything. Are you saying that this? Anything. You're saying that this truck protest is going to be counterproductive. It will after it's done. I huh. guarantee it. I guarantee it. Okay? So, so do you think because they should not be people, protesting and making their voices heard? Just. They made this statement, get themselves back on the road, and get the job done. So that it's okay to make the statement. You're, you're, not, you're not against that? Huh? You're not against them making their statement? Oh, I don't have, a, I don't have any uh, ill feelings about making a, making a protest. Yeah. But don't make it so blasted long that you're going to do nothing but, like I said, pick off the people that controls this industry. Don't do that. Interesting. You're going to get yourselves into more trouble than what you're going to have after this event ends. You watch. That mind, m- my, mind, my, mind, my, mind my thoughts here. You may after be right, event, man. You may be right about that. I don't after, know. After this event is done, Canada will make more and more um, regulations and laws against the transportation industry up there in that, that country. You, you know watch. what? You... you this reminds me of something that I heard on the crypto report uh, regarding the protesters, the right, the so-called right-wing protesters. Um, yeah. uh, by the way, according to Breitbart News, coronavirus mandates start dropping in Canada as the Freedom Convoy rolls on. That's a Breitbart headline, and so maybe there yeah. is there is some sympathy for this. I think people are, you know, I think a lot of, I think you can't really ignore when it's masses and masses and masses of people, even if it's not what the establishment wants. And the establishment kind of knows that they've run, they've run this thing 
dry, but I don't. I think they want to squeeze you know? every bit of power that they can get out of it and hold on to that. Well, but but know, one point, like I said, one point that they well, that was made on the crypto report, Asmodor and others, that the the people who are really marginalized, like the whites who are protesting uh, uh, the attack yeah. on the whites, they said um, that the crypto report people said that. Oh, you know, with these bus boycotts, there was like a year-long bus boycott down in the South with the so-called civil rights movement. They had the establishment on their side. The federal government was on their side. I mean, it was the federal government was split, but it was on their side. The mainstream media was on their side. So they had the establishment behind them. They were not anti-establishment. They were they were the establishment, effectively, the so-called civil rights movement. Yeah. So that was they were. They were not true freedom fighters as they pretend like they are. The ones who are, they're not going to get what they want. The January 6th people is a classic example. So is is this trucker convoy going to go the way of January 6th where we get worse clamp down on us? Or is it going to be actually change things? I guess we shall see. You may be right, though. And, and, uh, you know, like I said, every time that Every time that we have taken and shut the trucks down for a strike to change things, we've always ended up with something else. Something uh, you know, worse, this huh? This is where the, where the uh, electronic logs have come in, too, and all these uh, added-on taxes and tolls and all this other stuff. They get revenge by creating more aggravation to us out here. Yeah. Every time they do that. So do your thing. Make your point. But don't drag it out. Nice. I appreciate it, Rick. Thank you for your perspective. Take care. All right, buddy. All right. Bye. Guys, this has been the Hake Report. Callers, I cannot get to you. Luca in Indiana, I wanted to get to you. He wanted to talk about going down rabbit holes. And he's the one who's been talking with me about the um, various things, including the, the, uh, what is that thing? What do you call it? Chemtrails, thank you. <laughs> and there's other stuff I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about Nick Cannon. That'll have to go- wait until tomorrow, hopefully. Tomorrow I am going to start late, guys. I'm going to start half hour late. It's going to be in an hour and a half show tomorrow. Um, there will be, JLP will be on RT America, Russia, or RT, Russia Today, I believe, with Steve Maltzberg. But anyway, guys, thank you, and take care. Thank <laughs> you.